I have a word. And the word comes from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 17. And it says, if you should say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispose them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember well what the Lord your God did to, did to Pharaoh and all to Egypt. The greater the trials which your eyes saw, the signs and the wonders, the mighty hand and the outreach, outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out, so shall the Lord your God do to all the people of whom you are afraid. Moreover, the Lord your God will send the, the hornets among them until those who are left, who hide themselves from you, are destroyed. You shall not be afraid. You shall not be terrified of them. For the Lord your God, the greater, the great and awesome God, is among you. And on down it says, And the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. Little by little, you will be, you will, you, uh, little by little, you will be unable to destroy them at once, lest the beasts of the fields become too numerous for you. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you and will inflict defeat upon them until they are destroyed. And he will deliver their kings into your hands, and you will destroy their names from under heaven. No one shall be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them. You shall burn the carved images and their gods with fire. You shall not co covenant and the silver and the gold that is on them, nor take it for yourself, lest you be snared by it. For it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it, for it is an uh, accused thing. Now, God is going to destroy your idols. God is getting ready to destroy the idols. The hand, let me say this, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And so as you are seeing that people are being exposed, as you are seeing that people are being um, brought down, as you are seeing that you see a lot of people and it's not over, you are seeing a lot of things taking place in the world right now. There is a lot of people that are being exposed, but God is saying that when I do these things and I, and, and God is going to see when, when people see there's so much money right now, let me say this. There's so much money right now that is in the hands of the wicked. They got their hands on it. There's so much, but God said, I'm going to give it to the people. I'm going to give it to the chosen. I'm going to give it to the ones who are spreading the gospel. Not only are you rich in heaven, but you're also going to be rich here on earth. And, and, and I'm going to say this, that God says that when I bring you over into them and I, and I, and I, and I, when God says I, when I bring them in, bring them into you, meaning that when I deliver them over to you, when these people are brought down, when they're, when the people are exposed and I'm talking about in every level, everywhere are exposed. God said, do not, do not become like what they are. Do not take their carved images. Do not become like. Do not be become a, a, a idol or worshiper of money. Do not become an idol or worshiper of things. Do not want you don't you get what I'm saying? God wants us rich. God wants us to uh, have the best of the best. But at the same time, God does not want you to put those things before Him. But this is a time where there is so many things that are happening in the world that you see that are the signs of God. That is the finger of God is on it. God is exchanging the, the, uh, the wealth into the hands of the righteous. And people say, but when you talk about money, it sounds like, no, it's not greed because you need money to help your families. You need money to be able to spread the gospel. You need, you need, and when I say that there's times where God will send you somewhere, how are you going to go if you have no money? So you need money resources. I'll say resources you need, but there's people who have these resources that are wicked. And God is removing those resources from them to give them to the righteous so that the gospel is spread all over the world so that you are able to help those that are in need. So, but God is saying this, that when I deliver them over to you, <clears throat> you shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh 
into all of Egypt. See, Pharaoh did not want to let they did not want to let the Israelites go. You remember when Moses went into uh, 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 went into Egypt and told them to let my people go. And and there's a lot of times where God is telling people you need to, you know, he's exposing them. You know, a lot of things is happening and they won't turn to God. They won't, they won't, they won't, uh, uh, uh submit to God. They're, they're like saying, you know, I'm going to be all right. I'm good. I don't need God. I don't, you know, they don't want God, but God is saying that do not be afraid of these people when I deliver them over to you. Meaning when you speak the gospel and you preach the truth and you tell them that this, this thou sayest the Lord, that God does not want you living this way. And this way is not okay to live like this. God said, do not be afraid of them, but to stand up to them, to stand for righteousness, to stand because a lot of times people want to be, uh, 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 Call on the name of call on call on God, but it's not the God that the Almighty God. It's not it's 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 idols. It's it's it, you know it's 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 Satan for sure. So God is saying, but when I deliver them over to you, do not. He first he says, remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and all of Egypt, the great trial which your eyes saw, the signs and wonders, the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So God said, I'm bringing you out of poverty. I'm bringing you out of wh where you, you, you are lacking. You are the head and, the, and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. But there seems to be, uh, uh, there seems to be like a, a, um, where wealth is upside down in the world. You got people that are wicked that have the money and the resources. Then they're really not doing anything with these resources other than doing wicked things. Correct. So God said, I'm going to, this is a season and a time of where it is. The wealth is being transferred, but you got to position yourself to believe that God is going to do it for you. Do you believe that God will do it for you? Okay. So God is saying that God is saying that, and the Lord, your God will drive out those nations before you little by little, because you're wondering how is God going to do this? God said, I'm driving them out little by little. Uh, uh, you will be unable to destroy them all at once, but you'll see people coming down and being exposed one by one. You'll see people being, um, uh, you'll see their wealth drying up. And this is not a thing of like, you want to see people go down because God is removing that from them so that they can come to God because their wealth is destroying them. Their wealth has taken them somewhere else. Their wealth has got them living wicked. Their wealth has got them living for Satan. But God is getting ready to take the wealth from the wicked and give it to the just. Okay. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you and will inflict defeat upon them until they are destroyed, which meaning that they will be brought down. But the destroy of them is just going to bring correction to them so that they will start serving God. They will come to Jesus and, and he will deliver their Kings into your hands and you will destroy their names from under. This means under heaven. And this means that you will speak preach the gospel. You will say that this thou saith the Lord, that God said that he is not okay with how you're living. This is not okay that you are doing. You will stand for righteousness because God is holy. But God said, do not be afraid. There are some that are listening to me right now and you are afraid to even speak up in the environment that you're around. You're afraid to speak up. But what did God say? He even said it. The Bible says that if God tells you a word and you don't go forward to tell that word, then the blood is on your hands. So God said, do not be afraid. Did I not bring them out of Egypt? When I brought them out of Egypt, Pharaoh was a uh, uh, God heart in his heart just to show his power, how great he is. Nobody can do nothing with God. Nobody. So you don't need to be afraid of anything. Preach the gospel, speak the gospel, speak truth. God is saying, because I'm about to, I'm bringing these people down one by one. There is so much uh, wickedness going on behind closed doors, but God said, I'm going to bring them down. I'm going to remove them. I'm removing Kings, people that think that they are Kings. God said, I'm removing them off their throne and he will deliver the Kings into your hands and you will destroy their names from under heaven. No one shall be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them and, and shall burn the carved images and their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver and the gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves. You remember in, jo in Joshua, in, in Joshua, whereas they were uh, uh, defeating every kind of um, every kind of battle, but when they decided to steal something, they had they um, all of a sudden 
they was not able to, to, to uh, win the battle. Joshua and them was not able to win the battle and Joshua went before the Lord and God told them that somebody stole some of the money. Somebody stole some of the things, but then when they made it right and they dealt with the sin, then they were able to begin to win the battle. So God is saying to keep your heart positioned and in the right way. Do not in your, you know, like be like, well, I can't wait to get wealth so that I can, you know, don't become wicked with the wealth that God gives you. Do the right thing. So into, so into um, people's lives, begin to help people do, you know, don't just be like sticky fingers. Some people are just sticky fingers. When I say sticky fingers, I mean like people don't, sometimes get money, don't want to give it. They just want to keep it for themselves. But God wants you to be able to give when he gives it to you. It's not just for you it's to help other people. It's to help to, to two things that they will be thankful that you gave it to them, but they will also praise the Lord because God gave it to them. So that will be able to happen. And then you win souls all also over to Jesus because you're able to witness the people. As you help them, you're able to witness the people and tell them who has blessed you. So God said that when I give you this wealth, do not become like they are where this, you know, they silver and gold and you take on their image. The people that God is delivering into your hands that are being exposed. God said, do not become like them. Do not take on anything of them. And nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. So God is saying that I'm about to do this. And you see it. You see it taking place. That you see that God is bringing people, wicked people down one by one. And it is not, it is not over. But that wealth that is, being, is going to be transferred to the righteous. Those that are speaking the truth. Those that are preaching the gospel. God, see, we, people don't understand is that you see the earthquakes and things that are happening. We are in some, 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 some evil times and we are in our end times. And so there is a lot of things that are happening. A lot of things that is showing that God is, 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 is doing something big behind the scene. I pray that this message helps you. Trust and believe that God is working in your situation and that he is going to show up and show out in your life. And things are about to change. You're going to see a whole lot of things taking place. God is taking the wealth of the wicked and it's going to be transferred to the righteous. And not only that, it's going to be land. It's going to be property. It's going to be a lot of things. There's people who are wicked that got Tons and tons and tons of cars. And you got people that, that don't have a vehicle at all. Can't even get around. And they're like, well, you know, and their mindset, here's the mindset of the wicked. Well, I worked hard to get this stuff, but God gave them, God gave them the, the, the breath in their body to get it. But when they first started out, that's how they, they told God, if you help me, I'm going to help people. But they decided after they see greed, when greed sets in, that's why God said, do not take on the mind of the wicked. Do not become like them, lest you be for destruction. And God would have to bring you down and start it all over again. Meaning that, you know, it's like the, uh, the, 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 pot, the, the clay on the potter's wheel. And then when God forms us and gets us together on the wheel, then we, we, we become, you know, wicked. You know, or we be, start doing things that are going to draw us away from God. And then God has to put the clay or the, you know, the, the clay back on there and start all over again. To, to, you know what I'm saying? So do not become, I hope I explained it that. When we get into mischief and we do things that are not okay and pleasing, it's almost like God taking that clay and starting it back over, you know, and, and saying, hey, this is not okay for you to walk this way or live this kind of way. So he starts all over with that clay, which is us. He is the potter and we are the clay. And so mold me and make me and shape me into where you want me to be. And so I want to also extend and say, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can make him the Lord of your life today by just simply saying, Father God, I know I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and I repent of my sins. I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. From this day forward, I want to serve you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
you just accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know what? The thing is, is that there are people who, if you passed away today, that if you haven't accepted Christ, then you would be doomed. You would be, you would basically, basically be done, finished, meaning that you wouldn't have an opportunity to go to heaven. See, God doesn't force us into heaven, but it doesn't throw us in hell. We actually make that choice ourselves. But God said he gave his only begotten son that who should ever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So if his son died on the cross for our sins, he suffered and God gave you that right. He gave you that gift to where you can have eternal life. If you don't accept it, then it would be, you would be destroyed and you would be suffering. His son suffered on the cross that you may have eternal life, but if you don't accept it, then that means that you're going to suffer. And that means in hell, the first death is where you go to haste. You go to haste. And then the second death is when you stand before God judgment, where you go to hell. And so if you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and savior, do that today. But, Again, there is a transfer of wealth happening, a transfer of land, property, everything happening right now. I pray that this message helps you. God bless you. Be blessed.